Hello you gorgeous people, welcome back to my second channel, welcome back to Jack in the Books. So a couple weeks ago I posted a video where I went to Barnes & Noble for the very first time and I had a freaking blast. And yesterday was my birthday. Oh my god, I'm officially 24. Ugh. That makes me feel violently ill, but uh, I'm gonna make myself feel better by going book shopping, obviously. So I feel very lucky because one of my lovely friends from back in the UK very, very kindly and generously sent me a Barnes & Noble gift voucher. Yes! And so I thought I would take you all on a little birthday book shopping haul. Now I've already posted one video where I went book shopping in Barnes & Noble and that was the one in Union Square which I think is the biggest one in New York, I think. But one place that I never go to in the daytime is Brooklyn. So I've been here in New York for like four weeks now and I've been to Brooklyn a fair few times but only in the evening. I've been there for dinner and I've been there for like some parties and raves and like a birthday party but I haven't been for a proper like walk around Brooklyn. I, I don't know the area at all. And so I thought this is like the perfect opportunity to go to Brooklyn, why not? I've also had some really great independent bookstores which I'm gonna do in a separate video so I definitely will still do those but um, just not today. I'm kind of like almost drip feeding bookstores to myself in New York, like I didn't wanna just get here and go to all of them. I don't know if this is sad, maybe it is sad. It brings me joy so shut up. <laughs> but basically I, have been using bookstores as like a reward for myself. Like when I get a certain amount of work done, like when I finish making a video or working on a project or hit a word count with my writing, I kind of reward myself with like a bookstore trip and I make a little video. So um, yeah, there's that. And <laughs> So um, that's kind of the reason that I'm gonna save the independent bookstores for another day. But yeah, today I thought I would just take you on a little trip to Brooklyn um, and we'll go to Barnes & Noble. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to see um, which of the subways, like which of the subway lines goes over the Brooklyn Bridge or like one of the bridges because I want to see the view and that's basically like instead of paying to go up the Empire State Building I can get a cool view just from the subway. Like for example in Paris you can take the 6 line and it goes across the river and you get the most amazing view of the Eiffel Tower like when the sun is setting it's so stunning. Um, even when the sun isn't setting it's like a beautiful view and I was really lucky because I lived um, like opposite the metro station which took you across that bridge. So I used to love taking that metro line, like whenever, you know when you have to go somewhere and you like Google Maps it to see how to get there, when I would see that I had to take that route, I'd be like, yes. Well, you know, like sometimes it shows you alternative routes with different timings. Like if that one just took a couple minutes longer, best believe I was taking that route. Because the view of the Eiffel Tower was so cool. So let's see if, um, what metro subway line, which subway lines go over, I think it's the Manhattan Bridge, isn't it? Okay, yeah, here we go. The Manhattan Bridge can be crossed by foot, car, or train. Okay, I think I've got my route. It's not the most efficient way of getting there, but I actually don't mind that it's gonna take a little bit of time because I need to finish this book for my book club tomorrow. This is kind of funny because this is the book that I bought in my first Barnes & Noble video. And I've got to like the halfway point and I'm really, oh, I'm not loving it. I really thought this was gonna be up my street, but pff, it's not even the same postcode. It's kind of Animal Farm vibes, which is what made me excited about it. And it was picked for us for the book club, so I didn't really know anything about it going in, aside from that it had been shortlisted for the Booker Prize, which usually I really enjoy, but I don't know, I'm just, it's really not landing with me. I feel like it's Animal Farm, but just not good. I'm not saying that the writing is bad, it's just not very engaging at all, and I'm not massively into the writing style. It's not really connecting with me. Um, I'm finding that there's just, such a huge cast of characters, and it's trying to cover a lot of ground, but I don't think it's doing anything especially well. And so I'm finding it kind of a bit frustrating, but I need to finish this book in time for the live stream in two days, because I'm really tempted to DNF. Like, normally, I think I would actually just stop reading this, but I don't know, because we're doing a book club on it, I feel like I need to finish it. And I always think that it is good to kind of challenge yourself to think, why don't I like this, rather than just getting halfway through and giving up. So just because I'm doing the book club on it, I am going to finish this. So I think some time spent on the train, will help. This is a very casual book shopping outfit. I have this Jacquemus uh, hoodie. I think that's an ice cube on there. I don't know, I just liked it. Then I have these trusty Santa Cruz trousers and my dunks. And then sticking with the French theme on the top, I have this tote bag from the Paris Cafe Festival. So let's go birthday book shopping in Brooklyn. All the bees. There's something about the yellow school bus that still makes me so excited because it just makes me think of The Simpsons.
It's a book haul. I'm buzzing. I got some books that I'm so excited about. And I also got a whole new YouTube video idea. So today was a good day. So basically, I, um, when I was in London, when I lived in London, I made a video called something along the lines of I read books that I saw strangers reading on the London Underground. And it's one of my favorite videos that I've ever made because it's so stupid, but also really satisfies my curiosity for like every time I see someone reading a book on the underground, I'm like, hmm, you are now very mysterious and cool in my head. And I'm always thinking, I wonder what you're reading and if it's any good. And with that video, I basically got to find out and I got a new like favorite book from that. And so I thought, now I'm in New York and I take the subway everywhere, I should do a part two. So with my gift card, I bought three books, which I'm very excited about. Um, let me show you them. So the book that inspired the video idea was this one because when I was on the subway to Brooklyn I saw someone reading this book and it's a book I've wanted to read for ages and I thought perfect and that book is All About Love by Bell Hooks. Bell Hooks was just the most brilliant, amazing, astute writer. Her observations are always just so on point. And I really, <laughs> maybe this is lame, I really like reading about love, like the concept of love. You know, romance books kind of help a lot of people satiate that urge to read more about love and to experience other people's love, but I love the abstract idea of love. I love reading about that kind of thing. Love, 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 right? And so this is All About Love by Bell Hooks. And let me read you um, the blurb. Will I be able to read the blurb? Like basically in the evenings, my contact lenses say, no sir. <laughs> We're done for the day. We're, we're clocking off. My eyes are super tired and this is like black font on a red background, so <laughs> oh boy. The word love is most often defined as a noun, yet we would all love better if we used it as a verb. This is what Bell Hooks writes as she comes out fighting and on fire in All About Love. Here at her most provocative and intensely personal, the renowned scholar, cultural critic, and feminist skewers our view of love as romance. In its place, she offers a proactive new ethic for a people and a society bereft with lovelessness. There you go. I'm excited to read this and it will be coming in that video, which um, is gonna be cool. So actually we started off with some nonfiction, which you don't often see from me on this channel, not gonna lie. The next book is this one. This is A Little Small Boy. Every time I go into a bookshop, I pick this up and I look at it and I go, oh, one day. And today was that day. Today is the day that I bought this book. It is called Tokyo Ueno Station. That might be wrong. Where's my phone? Let's find out. Ueno. 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 Ueno, okay, cool. So Tokyo Ueno Station. The reason <laughs> that I bought this, specifically in this haul, is because my friend Caroline, who kindly gave me this voucher, is half Japanese, and I love Japanese fiction. So this is translated from Japanese and set in Japan. Yu Miri is the author of more than 20 books and the recipient of Japan's most prestigious literary award. After the 2011 earthquake, and Tsunami, she began to visit the affected area, hosting a radio show to listen to survivors' stories. Oh my god, she has her own bookstore. Wow, now I wanna be her. And it's translated by Morgan Giles, who is a Japanese reviewer and translator. Okay, so she's Zainichi Korean, which means um, ethnic Koreans who have permanent residency status in Japan. The description of this <laughs> is also black text on a colored background. Oh man, <laughs> Kazu is dead, but through his eyes we see daily life in Tokyo buzz around him and learn the intimate details of his story, how society's inequalities and constrictions spiral towards his ghostly fate, with moments of beauty and grace just out of reach. Born the same year as the Japanese emperor, Kazu's life was tied to a series of coincidences to the imperial family and shaped at every turn by modern Japanese history. Oh my god, I'm sorry guys, I'm literally, I'm gonna be like, an old person in a dimly lit restaurant and I'm gonna have to read this with my phone torched. <laughs> 
Oh, I hate myself. I hate my eyes. Okay, anyway. But he always experienced bad luck and loss, and now in death he finds himself unable to rest, doomed to haunt the park near Ueno Station in Tokyo. A powerful masterwork from one of Japan's most brilliant outsider writers, Tokyo Ueno Station is a book for our times, and a look into a quiet yet illuminating, devastating and essential existence in a shiny global city. There you go, that is Tokyo Ueno Station. Oh my god, this is actually humiliating. I, this is like public embarrassment and I'm in control of it. But instead of waiting until tomorrow, I want to give you the whole now. <laughs> anyway, this is the last book that I read. I love the title of this. This is Everyone in This Room Will Someday be dead. And this is by Emily Austin. I can't wait to be like sitting in public like this. It's kind of threatening in a way. It's like, what does he know that we don't? Um, this is black text on a white background. So I think, I think I got this one. Gilda can't stop thinking about death. Desperate for relief from her anxious mind, she responds to a flyer for free therapy at a local Catholic church. But Father Ted assumes she's there for a job interview. Caught off guard and too embarrassed to correct him, Gilda is abruptly hired to replace the recently deceased receptionist, Grace. It's not the most obvious job, she's a lesbian and an atheist for starters, and so in between trying to learn uh, mass and conducting an amateur investigation into Grace's death, Gilda must avoid revealing the truth of her own mortifying existence. Everyone in this room will someday be dead blends warmth, deadpan humour, and pitch-perfect observations about the human condition in this crackling exploration of what it takes to stay afloat in a world where your expiration and the expiration of those you love is the only certainty. That description has made me want to read this book for so long. In fact, all three of these books are books that I've had my eye on for a while, and so when I was browsing the bookstore, I just kind of gravitated towards these three, and so I'm very, very excited to read them. I met up with a friend who lives in Brooklyn, and we went to a place on his recommendation called Emily, which is a kind of pizza burger place. You know, they do these, um, this like burger, it's $31, so it's expensive. We didn't uh, order it, but you, it says like underneath the description of the burger that you cannot make any amendments to the burger, like you can't have anything substituted, you can't have anything removed from the burger, they're like, you have to eat it, <laughs> how we designed it. And I've never seen that before, I thought that was quite interesting. But anyway, we ordered pizzas, um, and they were delicious, they were really good, so I recommend. What else do I have to update you on? Um, on the train home, the subway home, there was a man playing the bongo drum for the entire journey, which was actually very, very enjoyable. <laughs> I really, it was a good um, reading soundtrack for reading this. I'm so nearly done with Glory, and tr really and truly the main glory here will be when I'm done and never have to read this book again. Because I'm really just, I'm not loving it. The writing style is just not for me at all. In fact, I just flicked past a page that I want to show you. This author loves repetition, like she eats it up for breakfast. So like, here is an example where like, this is a whole page of just the word take. Take, 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 take. And like, this would be effective if she did it once, but she does it constantly and it's so annoying. I really am not vibing with this at all. It's really similar to another book um, in terms of its tone uh, called This One Sky Day, which I also really didn't like. So it's definitely this very specific, like, satirical, political tone, which I just don't seem to be vibing with at the moment, I'm not sure why. Um, because I actually, on paper, would have thought that I'd really like this, but I, the paper, the paper that I have is not good. So, I've got, like, 50 pages left, which I am really pleased with, because I was <laughs> determined to finish this book, especially because I bought it in hardback, and because I'm doing it for the TikTok book club, but hopefully next month's pick is better, because this one... <laughs> Oh, it's hell. Anyways, today's been a success. Um, massive shout out to my friend Caroline for the Bonds and Noble voucher. Literally, this has been amazing fun. I've had, I had the nicest time. And now I have three great books that I can't wait to read. And thank you also to you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Um, until next time, all the best. Stay in touch. Have a wonderful day. And bye-bye.